and in this video we are looking at angular acceleration right uh, so far uh, in the previous videos we have looked at the angular displacement theta which is equal to s upon r where s stands for arc length and r is the radius of the circle uh, we have looked at omega which is angular velocity which is given by angular displacement theta divided by time t and uh, we have looked at v which is linear velocity and that is given by s upon time t and uh, what else uh, these are some of the things that we have discussed and yes we have looked at omega is equal to 2 pi by t this is the angular velocity for one complete revolution where 2 pi is 2 pi radians and t is the time period okay. Uh, with this background, we'll now look at angular acceleration in this video. So, let us uh, look at a body which is performing uniform circular motion. Right? So, I'll draw an object which is performing which is performing uniform circular motion so let us say this is the circle in which the object is performing uniform circular motion this is the center say o and uh, let me get the diameters in place okay. so let us say this is the diameter one diameter and this is the second diameter right so this is this is the center of the circle and let us say the body is initially in location p1 and then it uh, turns through an angle theta and reaches location p2 so this is the radius vector and this is location p2 it has turned through theta and the radius of the circle is r right? so the body performs uh, is performing uniform uh, circular motion and it is at location p1 at time t equal to 0 and in time t it moves to point p2 Right, and in the process, it turns through theta radians. Right? We, since we want to find out angular acceleration, we should have an idea about the velocity of the object at location p1 and p2. So let us say uh, this object is moving with the velocity v, and the velocity will be tangent at this particular location. So I'll draw the velocity vector, and I'll draw it of uh, length, say for example, 3 centimeter length. So let us say the velocity is 3 meters per second, which I am representing by a line. 3 centimeters so this is velocity v1 this vector represents velocity v1 right and when it reaches p2 the velocity is again 3 meters per second a tangent at this particular location so and the 3 so this is the second velocity vector right and this is velocity vector v2 and uh, this also is 3 centimeter long because the velocity the speed remains constant 3 meters per second right so this is velocity v1 and velocity v2 okay if you want to find out uh, acceleration we need to find out change in velocity so i need to find out uh, v2 minus v1 which i'll denote by delta v so I'm trying to find out v2 minus v1. So what we'll do is we'll use the method of subtraction of vectors to find out v2 minus v1. So what I'll do is I'll draw vector v1 first, which is three centimeter long. Uh, three centimeter long. So I'll draw a line. Uh, let me see here, of three centimeter long. So I'm drawing a line three centimeter long over here. So this is vector v1. This is vector v1, and from the same point I'll draw vector v2 right 3 centimeter long again so I will have to draw a line 3 centimeter long over here so let us say it's over here and uh, let us say this is vector v2 3 centimeter long so, vector v2. so if this is vector v1 and this is vector v2 if I complete this uh, triangle right if I complete this triangle I get a vector over here which is v2 minus v1 okay. so this particular vector is the change in velocity v2 minus v1 which is delta v right delta v and to find out angular acceleration we need delta v so I have got delta v now uh, 
if this is theta right this will also turn out to be theta using a little bit of geometry we can understand this uh, if this is theta right this is the angle between two lines which are perpendicular to op1 and op2 so their angle will also be theta right theta is the angle between op1 and op2 and these two lines v1 and v2 are perpendicular to op1 and op2 right hence the same angle is maintained over here so this angle also turns out to be theta now we'll be using a little bit of geometry to get uh, the value of acceleration so what i'm going to do is i'm going to compare two triangles i'm going to compare triangle triangle o p1 p2 which is triangle o p1 p2 now this is an arc but for small values of uh, theta this arc would have the same length as line p1 p2 so i'm going to consider p1 p2 arc length same as the length p1 p2 so i'm comparing triangle o p1 p2 with triangle let me give this this triangle a name a b and c i'm going to compare it triangle a b c so if i look at these two triangles what i observe is that one of the angle is equal right and the ratio of their sides right if i look at triangle op1 p2 then op1 upon op2 is equal to 1 because op1 and op2 are the radii of the same circle so op1 upon op2 is equal to 1 and in triangle abc what i see is the magnitude of v1 upon magnitude of v2 also is equal to 1 because the body is performing uniform circular motion and the speed remains constant so v1 and v2 will have the same uh, magnitude so v1 upon v2 is 1 so and third thing is theta is equal to theta right these two angles are equal so the ratio of two sides two corresponding sides is same and one angle is common so based on this i can conclude that triangle o p1 p2 is similar to triangle a b c so triangle op1 op2 is similar to triangle abc and when two triangles are similar the ratio of their corresponding sides turns out to be equal right that's the property of two similar triangles so i'm going to use that property of two similar triangles the ratio of the corresponding side is equal so for triangle op1 p2 let me write over here for triangle op1 p2 if i take p1 p2 upon let us say p1 p2 upon op1 that will be equal to the corresponding sides ratio for triangle abc and that will be bc upon ab right. the co side corresponding op1 uh, p1 p2 the corresponding side is bc so i get p1 p2 and bc over here and op1 the corresponding side is ab so i get ab so this ratio is equal right and therefore if i put their values now p1 p2 p1 p2 is is s the arc length right or the distance s and op1 op1 what is op1 op1 is r radius r this is r so this is also r right and this is equal to bc what do i have as bc bc is delta v so this is delta v and what is ab ab is vector v1 i'll replace it by vector v s upon r is delta v upon. this is vector v1 but i'll replace it by vector v because v1 because v1 is equal to v2 and i can take that as v so this is v so s upon r is delta v by t now uh, therefore i can write down delta v is equal to delta v is equal to v upon r into s delta v is equal to v upon r into s now if i divide by delta t on both sides so delta v upon time delta v upon time is equal to v upon r to s upon t now delta v by t is the angular acceleration because it is change in velocity upon time so this is angular acceleration a and v upon r and s by t and s by t what is s by t s by t is v right therefore i get a is equal to v square upon r right and this is the formula for finding out angular acceleration a is v square by r right okay i'll continue with a little bit of math on uh, the left hand side right so just let me put a margin over here so, uh, so i'll use this particular part so if i 
use this formula a is equal to v square upon r right now v is equal to r omega right therefore a becomes equal to r square omega square by r and that is omega square r so that's another formula i have is equal to omega square r so this is angular acceleration in terms of angular velocity and over here we have got angular acceleration in terms of uh, linear velocity so we can use these two uh, formulae to find out uh, angular acceleration and uh, what we need to under what we need to understand over here is that this are applicable for uniform circular motion only so please note this that this is for uniform circular motion So let us stay with these two formulas and in the next video right on angular acceleration I'm going to continue with angular acceleration and in the next video uh, I'll be talking about the direction of this angular acceleration here we have looked at the magnitude of angular acceleration and the next video we'll talk about the direction of angular acceleration thank you